you want to sound smart, throw around words like strategy, marketing strategy, content strategy, email strategy. The problem is most people confuse the word strategy with plans. Most strategy strategies that people present are really just plans. They're just, oh, here are the things that we're going to do in marketing over the next quarter, half a year. But that's not a strategy. That's just a series of activities. A strategy is more of a hypothesis. It's a difference between executing a playbook take like looking at a play multiple playbooks and frameworks and you're like doing all the research and saying okay i found a unique opportunity here that could make a, a big positive impact on uh the results from our marketing activities or whatever i totally agree with devin she actually shares her media-led strategy for marketing today she has a hypothesis that if you tap into a community and create a media-led approach to attracting them, your company will do better in the long term. In this Marketing Pops episode, you learn first, the problem with the traditional SEO approach. Second, the power of tapping into a community. Third, a B2B company that's using a media-led strategy really well. And number four, one thing that's helped accelerate Devin's career. Now, before we get started, I've created a free power-up cheat sheet that you can download and apply Devin's media-led strategy you can find that at marketingpowerups.com or in the show notes and description. Are you ready? Let's go. Marketing Power Ups. Ready? Go! Here's your host, Ramley John. Well, Devin, I'm so, so, so excited to have you here. You know, um, we have the AppQs connection. Margaret used to work at AppQs, which is your thing. Well, you work well, Animals has worked with AppQs. So um, we work with Animals. So thank you for coming on. Uh, we're going to be talking about media-led strategy. And, you know, that word strategy is so loaded because we love to talk about it, like content strategy, marketing strategy, company strategy. But the problem with it is often very, like, vague and hazy. And, uh, you know, you talking about media-led strategy. I'm curious, first of all, what, to you, what isn't, what isn't a strategy? Like, that's such an uh, important thing because people think it's something, but it might not necessarily that thing and I heard you have a lot to say about this I think when I was at animals still Ryan Law and I did a whole oh, episode on this where we were we both read Walter was a big fan of good strategy bad strategy so I think if you basically anytime you worked there anyone who worked there had read it basically and what we we're discussing is how most strategy strategies that people present are really just plans. Mm. They're just, oh, here are the things that we're going to do in marketing over the next, you know, quarter, half a year. But that's not a strategy. That's just a series of activities. A strategy is more of a hypothesis. And it usually involves experimentation. And to some degree where um, you're not just like, it's a difference between executing a playbook and take like looking at a play, multiple playbooks and frameworks and you're mm. like doing all the research and saying, okay, I found a unique opportunity here right. that could make a, a big positive impact on uh, the results from our marketing activities or whatever this is the hypothesis and then underneath that are the activities that you're going to do so right. like the reason why i would call media-led strategy i put strategy at the end of that is that it is conceptual in nature i'm not i don't have a playbook for you to say every b2b SaaS company should do x y and z it's a belief that Leading with media in your marketing, uh, in your yeah, in your marketing will return unique results, like uniquely better results, and is um, fundamentally better than the sort of current strategy du jour because it by leading with media you have repur repurposing built in. Mm. And there are a great many tools right now, including AI, that are make repurposing very easy. Mm -hmm. And so the concept is that it is more human forward 
So, um, which I think is more effective these days anyway, it leverages the tools and that are currently available. So it's like very present day now. It's not, it's not intended to be this, like it's, it's capturing the reality that we are in right now. Um, and it's flexible. It can be distributed across multiple team members, et cetera, et cetera. So like that to me is a strategy because it's, it has a hypothesis right. and it takes in sort of the, the realities and tools of today and is different from the current common strategies that are being deployed in B2B SaaS marketing. And the current common is typically write like a blog and then <laughs> create content like that. When we say content, people think about content. They think about the blog and you're talking more of a holistic approach where like media could be many different kind of assets or forms. Yes. And the thing is, we got so asset focused mm. in B2B marketing strategy where it was like, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to write blog posts and, you know, search and all that. And we're going to use social media for distribution. And it's like, and there stopped being, and it was so performance focused. It was, it became, you know, and we've, everyone has already talked about how the improvement in uh, measurement tool, like measuring the more tools we had to measure our marketing was first really great because it made it advocating for our jobs better, but also it resulted in this like very tactical, mm, yeah. um, these tactical marketing plans that lack a greater vision, hype, um, uh, stance, and personality, and that transactional kind of approach just isn't working anymore. I mean, I think I might have said this in public more than once, but I was like, I was like, websites are dead. Like, you don't need them anymore. Like, blogs are just a library that you know people can reference when they need to. Like, it was really, um, but that's kind of true. It's like. What if we put your the idea at the center? Mm. Why did you even make like why you made this product in the first place? What is the challenge that it was uh is, it was solving? What is like who are the people it's helping? If you put the this a media led strategy really emphasizes more uh the idea. And then you think about how where is best to share that idea after? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it's, I, I feel like it inherently puts the customer at the center again. It inherently puts your product at the center. It puts your people at the center. And there's sort of a limitless number of uh, experiments that you can run that way. Uh, so that's why I'm so, like, I'm so passionate about it. Cause also it's just more interesting. Like right. everything became about like, you know, the journey, sure. right, this journey. linear journey. Right. I'm like, I need you to know that journeys don't look like that. They just look <laughs> journeys are like a subway map inside right. and out. Yeah. And it's like, let's stop simplifying and embrace the mess and chaos. And mm. That's what I think this strategy does, and I think it'll be more effective. Mm. It's funny compared to Subway Path because New York's, you know, I, I've gotten lost. Like, oh, line one, line three. I'm based out of Toronto. We have like three lines. <laughs> Versus New York, where like there's multiple ways to get from point A to point B, multiple potential paths. Mm -hmm. And this is a challenge is like we try to often like, Strategy is like trying to make sense of chaos and by doing so, simplifying it so much so that it kind of deduces, deduces it to something that is easy to communicate, but at the same time, it like loses, like you mentioned it, that humanness to, to, to it all. And I think, I mean, I get it, right? We automated it down so that it was more like presumably more efficient and effective and cost less, right? Because the, the flip side of that is like an unruly, unmeasurable marketing uh, plan that, you know, is wasteful. And um, but so like I understand the appeal of automating as much as possible and playbooks and all that. But, you know, I was thinking about uh, my friend uh, Michael, who's the founder of Campfire Labs. He is like, to me, a really good example of 
someone who inherently str- thinks strategically. So on the side, he's very interested in climate issues. And he's launched more than one. He launched a newsletter. I forget. I think it was called Carbon Switch that immediately took off. Mm. Had tons of subscribers. Ended up being uh, a company offered to buy it and bring. And so we did that. And then he started another newsletter that like took off on YouTube. Took off on on uh, the news the newsletter subscribers. Like I'm talking tens of thousands. And that is like. He knew the exact thing within a small community that, and the angle and the way to discuss it. And he did experiments in in between and found, you know, and there's a lot going on there that I don't talk about because it's his to talk about, but like other opportunities have come from this and it's because, and and it didn't take a lot of effort. That's a thing. And because, because he we had he embraced his depth of knowledge and wasn't afraid to niche down right that oddly it blew up same thing with margaret and i right we were like we only want to talk to marketing leaders we're like we're not talking to anyone else i'm so sick of this beginner shit like it's boring and man our podcast took off better mm. than more than we expected like we thought oh it'll be a marketing channel for us blah blah, blah. and then we're like oh whoa wow like we had sponsors offer, just right. people offer to sponsor us after six episodes, like lots of other examples like that. And so um, we're sort of an example of it, just like that works. That is strategy, right? Mm. Um, and it's different than a plan. The plan came after the strategy, after the strategy. Right. That makes sense. And what I'm hearing here is like media led works so well if you're tapped into the community. Because you already kind of know what the problems are and what challenges they have. Is that what I heard that correctly with that example with kind of Fire Labs and with Don't Say Content? Yeah. And why wouldn't you? Like You would think that's already at these companies' disposal. Because if you're going through the, the uh, motions of building a product, all that customer research and talking to customers and you know putting different early versions of the software out there, right? You're learn you, you know already. You know, and you have access to these people because they've already given you feedback. You've probably already run whatever customer tests or whatever you do. I so uh it's already there. So of course you'd be able to do this mm. without extra like those people are already at your disposal. You've already net you know you already have built a community of those people around you. So um I think like it's again, it's very organic to me. It's very obvious. Mm. It's it's easy. That makes sense. Eh, easy. You should never. I think actually <laughs> saying yeah. is kind of rude. It's easy to some people. It's easy when you're. I'm not entirely sure if even if you've done. I forgot who said it. I think Ryan Fishkin recently said like, whoever said that it, it's second time you start a company it gets easier. That they're lying or something like that. It's you know that's might be that case here too. Where, yeah. yeah. Right. It's like the things that you've done before become less hard, but then a whole bunch of new problems right. you didn't get yeah. to before are like in your face. Yeah. Um, but it is, I think the organic thing is really where I th- is really what I'm trying to say is that it's not like, um, I'm trying to find a good example. Instead of sort of like forcing something to happen, it's almost mm. like opening the gates and letting the water flow. Mm. That's that's a great analogy there. I just want to recap and like um, just share this this hypothesis you have about media led strategy. If you if people if if people lead with media, right? Um, you mentioned around getting unique results with it, and that's really what's what you're getting at with this media led strategy. Where if you tap into the community, create media that resonates with them. Then they inherently get attracted to to what you're doing. To be if you're if you're a consultant, if you're a brand, if you're a product company, is that is that exact? Is that am I saying that right? Yeah, yeah. The media is the way to get your unique stance out into the world in multiple different ways, right? You have a you took a stance when you made a company. And you met, you made a product, and you set vision, and all of mm. that, right? That that comes from a stance about something. 
And there's lots of different ways to communicate that stance through people on your team, through your leadership, through people in the community that you surface. And each product or each industry or each, you know, uh, like developer communities, for example, like they, there's sort of this built in preference of where they like to interact and the mm -hmm. types of things they like to interact with, right? That's going to be true of any product. And so you sort of have these, like things are already narrowed down and then it's like, okay, cool. How do I want to, like, how will I, what can I contribute here mm. in these different media places? Uh, that was like the worst sentence I've ever said. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, how do I introduce something that is new and either entertaining, valuable, mm. fun, whatever? Um, I think that's it. Or it's been, it's what I've seen work over and over. Mm. Um, even I, I worked with Cisco uh, earlier this year with their DevRel marketing department. And I was, this is like a, this, yeah. this company is <laughs> like a world. Yeah, right. The huge, They're so big. Right. It's like, but they have these really robust communities. Like for a company that has this, like a very corporate website that has like more subdomains and pages that I've ever seen in, in my life. They have these robust communities that was so impressive to me. And, and there's multiple of them, multiple different people, you know, moderating them, the events that they, the conferences, et cetera, they're really engaged, like they, they engage the community and are engaged. And so, you know, that's an, like, they're an example of surprisingly, like I wouldn't necessarily think of a big company like that as a good mm. example, but they're a great example of using different forms of media across different team members of varying mm -hmm. role types in different community spaces and just regular marketing channels. It's really impressive to the point where this like world of Cisco is able to become small mm -hmm. in the right ways right? to keep those right. Which is, you know, something that they really like, that's, that's, that is important. Uh, component of their marketing strategy. So before I continue, I want to thank the sponsor for this episode 42 agency. Now when you're in scale up growth mode and you have to hit your KPIs, the pressure is on to deliver demos and signups and it's a lot to handle. There's demand gen, email sequences, rev ops and more. And that's where 42 agency founded by my good friend Camille Rexton can help you. They're a strategic partner that's helped B2B SaaS companies like Profit Wall, Teamwork, Sprout Social, and HubDoc to build a predictable revenue engine. If you're looking for performance experts and creatives to solve your marketing growth problems today and help you build the foundations for the future, look no further. Visit 42agency.com to talk to a strategist right now to learn how you can build a high efficiency revenue engine. Thank you also to the sponsor for this episode, copy.ai. Now let me ask you a question. Would you rather cut grass with a pair of scissors or lawnmower? Now the answer is pretty clear, right? With the right tool or partner, you can turn tedious, repetitive, and boring tasks from hours to minutes. When it comes to on-brand content and copy, that's copy.ai for you. Marketers from companies like Zoom, Okta, and SurveyMonkey trust it to produce high converting copy for the campaigns with just a few clicks. Copy AI team has created some of the best AI-powered marketing templates for ads, scripts, podcast outlines, email marketing campaigns, content marketing plans, and more. You can go to copy.ai to get those free marketing templates right now or find it in the show notes and description. Well, let's get back to this episode. I, I read it in one of your LinkedIn posts. It just connected to me now how media led strategy could also be called community led content strategy. Would you say that it's like you're really like tapping into the community to help you decide what to build rather than the traditional approach, which is let's do keyword research. <laughs> Whereas like, let's, let's not start there. It might help after, but let's start off with people. Let's start off with our customers. Let's start off with our employees, maybe, and tapping into that community first to see yeah. what would resonate with them first. Yeah. And it's like seeing the community, and I think it can ping pong a bit, or I tend to ping pong there, where, you know, I may have a strong stance. And so I share that strong stance. And LinkedIn is a place where sometimes I do that. I actually learned it from Ashley Foss. She's always testing stuff on LinkedIn to see 
what is resonating with people, how they're reacting to it. You know, is she onto something, tweaking it, sharing it again? Um, so, uh, it's like you, you, you have the idea, then you bring to the community or you research the community and then have the idea. It kind of ping pongs, um, back and forth. And I think that that, uh, once you get to actually sharing the final thing, you've got all these people around you who are already fired up about it. Mm, I, yeah. by accident, like I was saying something over and over in, in different places and talking to like when I would comment on something, I, I, I guess said it a lot that to the point where people were saying to me, they're like, oh yeah, you hate playbooks. I was like, what? Strong opinions weekly held. I was like, but actually I do hate playbooks. Frameworks are really better. <laughs> but it, it came back mm -hmm. at me. And that is a best case scenario for a brand. Right. Best case scenario. You want people saying you're believing in your stance so much that they're saying it back to you and to other people. That's mm -hmm. where the ubiquitousness, the sort of longevity of an entity can exist. You know, animals, you know, is a great example. Like, I built that brand into something so big mm -hmm. that at least while I was there, right? Like there was a lot it could withstand and a lot of brand can withstand um, and continue. You know, I would say when I left, I was a little bit behind the ball in terms of modernizing uh, an agency structure. And, but it didn't like it didn't matter. You know what I mean? People like the brand kind of gives you a little bit of a lifeline to get, you know, kind of catch up. So what I love, I really love about this you know, approach you're mentioning is that distribution and you mentioned it earlier, repurposing is like in, inherently embedded into it. The problem with with content often uh, creators is that they, there's just two phases where they first create and then they distribute and 90, 95 percent of the effort is on the creation piece. But here, it's almost like this feedback cycle where like you're already thinking about distribution at the same time and testing. You mentioned testing around what will resonate with this community. What, how will we share it? What approach and what channel in your, in your approach with this is essentially distribution first. Right. Imagine if, you know, you have an idea for a message, a positioning or a whole, you know, what if you were able to test that through someone who works at your company, who posts on LinkedIn, you know, has a community around them already, or your leader starts to talk about it, you know, you've different people sharing this as like a testing ground, very fast, mind you, mm -hmm. you get results immediately, or you get feedback immediately, which makes it super efficient. Um, and even going into those communities and asking them directly too. now all of a sudden your community feels a part of what you're building. And they're mm. more likely to pay attention when you do go out with it. Um, and look, I'm not saying that things like search aren't important. I just think that I still, it, when I, in the B2B, in the, in the B2B SaaS world, what I hear consistently is uh, Google search, right? It's very specific. We're still, for some reason, talking about search in that one context. And I'm like, there is an entire search strategy or search, uh, uh, like out, uh, approach to search that is unique to YouTube, to TikTok. There's a whole bunch of things that you can do to surface the stuff you're saying and build, um, build an audience there that aren't exactly the same as Google search and are worth mm -hmm. learning. So like, what I really, by taking it away from, again, the specific channels, you're like, it's media. And media to me is kind of like content. You can sort of like morph it into whatever you think it means. You know yeah. what I mean? Um, yeah. This is media. Like, <laughs> sure. You know what I mean? Uh, right. <laughs> you know, everything is a nail when you're a hammer or whatever. But, you know, what I wish people were saying is, hey, search, search general, like, Search is a thing, is a tactic. It's a it's a um, efficiency tactic. It's a performance tactic within your marketing plan, mm. and it applies across several channels. And we have built that is where a playbook actually really helps because right. it's stuff you like a lot of times it's stuff you have to do every time. You're like we have a little mini playbook across all of our you know all of our media channels that are um, that have search 
algorithms that can be optimized for, you know? And I think that that's like where the open, it's like, there's the openness of the umbrella to be, um, to bring in <laughs> these other, so you're not just, because, you know, it's, it's like the, the conversation is so boring currently about like, what's going to happen with search and because of AI and then what's going to happen with writing because of AI. And I'm like, right. stop, stop, because you're still focusing on something that's rapidly becoming ancient. Mm. What real strategy in 2023 is completely rethinking how you build brand affinity mm. and generate demand with all the new things that now exist. That would be a strategic approach. That would be someone going at solving a problem for their company in a strategic way. That's so deep. I feel like that's like, he probably already posted up on LinkedIn, but like, it's just a, such a tweetable thing talking about this brand of fit and need and, uh, and really generating that demand. And this media led approach is about that attraction piece. Again, you're like, Tapping the community, creating something for that community so that they get, a, you know, they're, they're attracted to your product, to what you're doing and what you're working, what you're talking about, the opinions that you hold, essentially. Jay says this, Jay Akunzo says this all the time about, you know, if you just, I, I'm going to ruin it. So please do not <laughs> take this word because he, he has something very pithy already put together, but he's a friend of mine. So, you know, he ta I hear him talk about this a lot, which is, you know, if you just make something great that people love, like that is the, that is the gravitational pull, mm -hmm. right? It's like attracting is really about, uh, creating things that people love such that they are attracted to you. Mm -hmm. You're not like going out and grabbing them. Like I always talk about kind of like the, you know, and I'm not knocking on like demand gen. Cause you definitely, I know you need to do all that stuff and fair, you know, you gotta, you, even when you bring people in on community, it's still a little messy. Like you gotta give someone a path to go down. And I totally get that and think it's important. But like, you know, there's a, there's like this whole world of people and we always talk about snatching those people out of the ecosystem and bringing it into ours. And I'm like, I, like, what if they, that feels yeah. weird. Like, yeah, it sounds weird. You know, You're right. Like, I'm not much of a sheepdog, you know, it's like, I'm not really trying to hurt anybody. Yeah. It's just like, when you do stuff, when you, when you have a unique perspective and stance and you are truly authentic. Because I think a lot of people talk about authenticity and then are still kind of too buttoned up and polished and, you know, mm -hmm. synced and not really relating mm -hmm. as much as they could. Um, even on the brand level, I think a particularly B2B SaaS brands could take a lot. Could, yeah. Really, they could really do better. You know, like mm -hmm. Help Scout was a great example of yeah. being more vulnerable is not the right word but like even, you knew what they stand, yeah. stood for mm. it was one of my favorite even though it was one of the hardest places i've ever worked um it was one of the best brands i ever worked for because man those three founders believed and the content showed that and so i think that that they're a great example of just like you can be different it's okay it's actually better right Stop following what everyone else is doing. And for the love of God, say something that I haven't heard 13 times in the last 30 seconds as I scrolled through LinkedIn, especially if you're talking about AI. Mm -hmm. I am done hearing writers weep about how it's going to take their jobs. And, you know, all, I'm like, strategies, you know, it's like, this is an opportunity. It doesn't have, like, you can change your job or like yeah. come up with a new, you know, like imagine if you looked at this and you were like, oh my gosh, I see this coming. I see the ways that my work is being commoditized. I have an idea. Those mm -hmm. are the people that are going to win right now. This is why, this is why I keep saying this is like the new age of, uh, search, you know, when like there was, you know, all of a sudden you could, in blogging, right. You could write a blog post and kind of like catapult your, um, like, you know, growth of your company. Like that was possible. That was this it's possible now on all levels, on an individual level, on a brand level. It's like, take these new changes. And instead of trying to worry about how it's going to impact existing model, change the model. And if you're the one that does it, 
it's likely that you will be, you will benefit um, more. In the most. It's Ooh. funny you mentioned. You mentioned like a a towel. <laughs> Gotta like go to the <laughs> yard. I need someone to like towel me off. Give me some water. <laughs> like, Whoa, hey. You're getting in there. This uh getting the into the hot takes. It's something that Margaret actually got super passionate. Margaret, your co-host for Don't Say Content. She was talking about how out of B2B SaaS. At some point, the icon she called the enterprise blue, where like all enterprise companies become they look the same and they take on this like really generic blue color just because it's safe and it's what's it's what it's done and you're like that's how you get lost in the sea trauma of i have trauma about that color. <laughs> like, what is it i do yeah it's, it's really if when i think of it i get a little upset i have to like take a pill or something i don't know but yeah you're right you're right you mentioned you mentioned that like, something in your chat with tommy walker she he asked you for your your content uh, principle, and you you just said don't don't be boring. You said it like very very like uh, just out there, and you started going through actual. But it's it's exactly what you're saying here. It's like if you say if you say as a brand enterprise blue, you say the same thing as everybody else. AI is gonna take a look. You you you're just essentially getting lost in that noise. And to, yeah, in like here's what I want to know. This is what I want to know. I want to ask every startup founder this is like, what is the benefit to just copying someone else mm. in any way? Your website, homepage, because I remember, and I think every marketer who's alive in B2B SaaS is going to know what I'm talking about. Every founder ever has come to us multiple times saying, my friend did this thing and <laughs> five minutes. And they're worth trillions of dollars now. We should do it. Right. Or yeah. like, oh, my friend, I heard of this, like, I know this guy and they, and they started a podcast and blah, blah, blah. Like, that is so ubiquitous. Mm -hmm. And the problem is when you try to do something that isn't, or try to get something done that isn't in your wheelhouse, the only thing that feels safe is what you've already seen that you know has succeeded. Mm. And so it almost put, puts blinders on you to logic around, yeah. would this work for our customers, given that they're completely different mm. from comp my, my friend's company that did it? Is this, do we have the same resources? Do we, you know, et cetera. It hasn't been done before. Um, and I think that's where you get that sea of sameness is, you know, it, it's like, it's like a version of the Silicon Valley bank. You know, it's like everyone starts telling each other, you know, the investors are like, you got to go, jump, you know, and they right. perpetuate this thing that was mm. really destructive instead of productive. And the same with, you know, design and brand and how you describe your product, how you do your pricing page. You know, it's like, what if you just thought from scratch and mm. talked to your customers and tested some stuff to see? Because at some point, Whatever exists now didn't exist before. Somebody did it new and it worked. And there's so many other things out there, but we're not doing it. And I think a big, one of the biggest reasons why we're not is because marketing in the B2B SaaS has stagnated due to the sort of fraught relationship between founders, CEOs, and marketing leaders. There is always, since the beginning of time, our time <laughs> as long as i've been alive and working in marketing let's just say yeah it is it is the most talked about thing behind the scenes uh around just found like marketers and founders not speaking the same language thus founders not really understanding what they're doing and constantly meddling and then changing course all the time probably definitely high turnover uh mm -hmm. in their marketing teams and Marketers struggling to show value um, because, you know, of time, resource, et cetera, to finish. And, you know, so there's learning on both sides that needs to happen. But this broken relationship has led to some pretty, like, pretty boring marketing plans that haven't changed much in the past 10 years, to be perfectly mm -hmm. honest. Yeah. Just in B2B SaaS, so you look at B2C and you're like, man, they're innovating all the time. They are, they are bringing real world virtual world in multiple different ways and they're like 
doing this thing and it's fun. It's engaging. They've got, you know, free brand ambassadors up the wazoo because they're doing like a pop-up thing here, a virtual experience here, you know. And why aren't we doing that? Mm -hmm. And it's because we haven't gotten anywhere because we can't even convince our founders to like and CEOs to let us do one very boring logical thing and right. stick with it long enough to show that it works, right? Um, and so I think like there's and Margaret talks about her and I have talked about this. She'd like, this is a thing that we've really latched on to recently is like, we need to solve that. Like that's at the very beginning. Um, at the same time that folks are are sort of uh experimenting with different uh strategic approaches on the outside. Cause I don't think we're gonna make a lot of progress unless we do. It's something you talked about on a LinkedIn post last week about how uh you were fired because of lack of performance, but the reason why is the founder just kept changing strategy or like you you telling you marketing team to do this new cool thing and you mentioned in that post that it takes consistency and time to really get a marketing program going and yeah my first nine months at that company <laughs> i had a very simple i had one goal for nine months or six months actually wait yeah it wasn't nine months it was like six months it might have even been less than that now that i think about it uh and I didn't just hit it. I beat it. <laughs> I showed up. I was like, I'm going to yeah. do this, you know? And my team was focused on it. We had support from the other teams, like design and demand gen to sort of help us. Um, and we did it. Mm -hmm. And of course we did because we were able to stay focused long enough. And I have to really loud my CMO, uh, for that because he was the one getting all the air cover so we could because we had a product uh founder and ceo who just didn't understand how marketing worked mm -hmm. and was very skeptical of a lot of things that activities that marketers engaged in and that once my cmo left they brought lovely very brilliant businessman and person who's like incredible and who i love when his first meeting with the, the marketing team he's like listen i don't know anything about marketing like i'm not a marketing expert like we're like oh my god what right and to his credit he was he was an incredible person and leader like he did all the things that he was supposed to do well um but when it came to the um goals for my team, my content team. They changed so much that <laughs> finally my CEO is like, you're not performing. I'm like, yeah, you're mm. right. Mm. So, and of course, like, this doesn't mean that you shouldn't change course along the way, but you should know why. Right. You should know why. And the why so comes from executing something long enough that you have enough, that you have the information that helps you make a, a logical decision. And it doesn't have to be one-to-one. -one. I, you know, ran this unmeasurable campaign and it led to, you know, like those mm. signals are always there and at least enough to know whether we should keep going or like clearly we should stop. Mm. So, and a good example of that would be we, I sort of used the podcast to conduct an experiment. I sort of already okay. knew the answer to. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. So I thought, okay, well, you know, we have this community around us already so let's um let's see if we can use youtube and or tiktok hmm. to either like are is it possible to uh grow awareness of the podcast and thus impact subscribers through those through those two channels my guess was no because they're very insular channels especially uh tiktok but then my follow-up question was, well, are the, is, this, is this a different community for us? Could we build a different community of marketers that are outside the community that we're right. already well-known yeah. in? So it's like kind of a two-pronged experiment. And because of that, and we tested intentionally with brand versus me individually and on TikTok specifically, and then we focused the brand on YouTube and it was obvious very quickly. Like when I posted the same stuff that we were posting on the brand account on TikTok, a ton of like, it was like 200 views to like 900. Wow. Right. 
And YouTube, we're still like, that's, we're still experimenting with that. Cause I just feel like I have more to learn on modern day YouTube and how to, you know, operate on that platform. But that's what I mean. It's a signal. Now, has that answered my fundamental question around <laughs> using? No, because I've got a lot more work to do. I have to be yeah. consistent on that channel for a long time to really see how it might benefit. And the reason I want to use it for the podcast is so I can see if, well, how might this be used for a brand? Because B2B SaaS brands in particular have struggled to figure out how to use TikTok for brand girls. So if I can use us as an example, I might discover something that's useful for them to experiment with too. And thus I can be more useful to my clients when I make recommendations. It's so cool. You're, you're experimenting with TikTok uh, already. I think that's something that only in the last year, I started hearing more companies like Open Phone and uh, Panda Doc experiment with we TikTok. Kind of yeah. yeah. They're doing some really cool, cool Zapier, stuff. Zapier, to their credit, Zapier mm. was doing stuff, I think, more than a year. I think they were doing stuff back in like, yeah, I guess it was 2022. I don't know if they're still using, but I, I, I love Zapier. Interesting. Um, I know I some of the follow. folks there. Like, I just love yeah. them as a brand. And they were doing some uh, TikTok stuff. So, mm. but yeah, it's just, you know, I think, again, there's a benefit to being a novice. Mm. And it's actually really fun to be a novice in something again, Yeah, to have been in this industry for so long and to go on it. Like when I first started using it, I was like, sweet Jesus. <laughs> what is I was like, I still feel that way. Like I barely know how to use it, but now I'm having fun, mm. which means once you start having fun, you mm. experiment more and you get right. weird as evidenced by my insane LinkedIn post this week where I was like, I don't care. Always goes back to you saying that you know, don't be boring. And it's you posting up. I think you were posting up you walking on like a a path, and then you were just like, I think you were dancing. I'm not entirely sure. I don't quite remember. But I was. Too, I went for a morning walk with my mom, and I like she didn't have any hand weights, and I thought that like a can of beans would be heavy, and it totally <laughs> isn't. So I was just like making jokes, and then right. so we were. Uh, I was making jokes at her, and she started recording me, and then. I started go running by myself when, and she drove the car back. So she's like driving alongside me, like recording me being in, like, it was just, I was just playing. I was having a fun day. And then I was inspired by being here to write about, you know, being in Vermont and what it feels like to open your mind, you know, in different places, et cetera, et cetera. And expose it, making the things you see all the time feel fresh. And I was like, mom, send me those videos. I want to make myself look crazy. You know? These are my beans. Like what? That's so good. But it really, you know, it's like yeah. that's the side though. And and this is something I did with Help Scout a ton, which is like I tried to bring out the individual personalities mm. of the founders, the other people right. who worked there. Um, and that stuff, it worked like it worked in the sense that that community, it latched people onto them stronger. They weren't just like, oh, your content is good, and now I'm going to leave. It's like they loved Help Scout. And that is something that lasts, right? It lasts longer than I wrote a good blog post this week. It ranked in search and people read it for long enough that, you know, whatever. It's like in our sense of uh, distributing it on their channels. It's like that's a that's a kind of relationship that will last forever and thus uh, produce, I believe, greater dividends over time. In terms of companies that are doing this, especially in B2B, we talked about you mentioned Pat, we mentioned Panda Talk, Zapier, HubScout seems to be doing this or was doing this, uh, still doing this right now. Or like, are there any companies that stand out to you that uh, is doing media led strategy well? We were, when I joined Animals, we did more um, media stuff. I, w I wouldn't say my back then, my I hadn't even, you know, things were different five, six years ago. So, um, but we did do a lot more video type work, um, bringing in the customer support team and then other, wow, we did a lot with media when I was there because I was, I mean, it was a customer support community. They want, it's all about community to them. Right. So we did this like humans of support wow. series That's cool. that was both video and written again, repurposing. Um, and then we repackaged those into like, um, you know, roundups later in the year. Um, so yeah, Help Scout, when I was there, we did a lot of that and it was really cool how much of the team participated in it. Um, 
Wistia, I think, is like the grandpa of media led strategy. <laughs> so like, right. They're the ones in my mind who should like probably take credit for anything that I say because I've watched them since I was a little baby in marketing. So um, I think they're a really good one. Um, oh, uh, Cisco, I already mentioned uh, Ashley Foss at Atlassian. Everyone yeah. knows her already, but she's a great example of. And what's interesting about her is, you know, Atlassian is this beloved brand. I love Atlassian too. I'm not paid to say that. Um, and she loved working there so much that she developed her own brand and is sort of like, she's a brand advocate even while working there, but it's not part of her job to the point where the LinkedIn posts that she shares about Atlassian do better than the Atlassian brand posts. Interesting. And they really, and the company to their credit supports this, right? Because she's going out and giving talks. And so um, but this was really of her own accord, which I think is a great example of sort of the micro influencer at company thing. Um, Sweetfish is uh, mm. a company that, yeah. yeah, and they just like, I like, they understand this like fundamentally. So even that, like, I don't, he I don't hear enough people talking about this approach, and I just like, I think it's worth giving them credit because they're kind of smaller. And then you know, there's obvious like. Uh, Amanda Natividad is a person who does that really well. Sarah Stockdale, um, Jay and Melanie with the Creator Kitchen, like they're sort of bringing that uh, approach in even inside the product itself, uh, sort of a multimedia experience with people in the community. So I think it's useful right now in B2B SaaS, it's kind of as much useful to look at individuals as brands because mm, there aren't as many brand examples. Yeah. And I think individuals are being more creative than a brand would necessarily feel safe doing off the bat. I think if these brands can really like, let's throw out this freaking style guide. Like, can we not actually, because I I worked with a company that, you know, and it was big and you had to adhere to the style guidelines. I'm like, you just took all the uniqueness and potential for this to actually do anything worthwhile yeah. out of it. Like, let's rethink what a brand guideline is. Mm. So there's more room for uh, truly like creative. Right fun, human, weird stuff, because that's that's really what's going to make a brand stand out more than anything. So we don't have to rant about style guides today. <laughs> we rant about it enough, but... Oh, so you know, good. Uh, yeah. yeah, getting let's get weird. Don't be boring and get, and get weird. Don't be boring. And if people had to stop here, that's the takeaway from this com conversation. But it doesn't have to. I actually want to shift gears and talk about career power-ups. You've been in marketing now for quite a while you were like director of content at help scout bp marketing and then you became ceo at animals you're now a marketing advisor a podcaster i'm curious what's helped you accelerate your career and uh really like help level up your trajectory of where you're going yeah i mean no surprise it was community and look i've invested a lot in the marketing community around me since the beginning since before you know, since my early days in Boston, um, you know, uh, when Jay and Aristia invited me to be on the board of Boston Content and we did all these events for marketers, I started my own events. Like, the list is long of ways that I've invested in this community. And thus, the community has really supported me back. And multiply, you know, 10 years later, when I quit you know, when I resigned as CEO of Animals and without a plan at all, like zero, the volume, I mean, when I tell you, I wrote one LinkedIn post announced that, announcing that I had resigned. And I think that one post delivered 125K worth of work over wow. five months without a lick of biz dev. And I didn't even mean it. I was like, here's a like, I did, I made this company some money. Like I, you know, here's all the things I did. And then it was like, it led to me. I didn't know what I was going to do. I was like, people kept asking. And I was like, I don't know. But then it was sort of came to me in the form of paid work for a while. And I was like, this is great. You know, <laughs> and that's, and, and mind you, I have not used the like, tr like the treasure chest of offers of help that I received. Mm -hmm. So many people, people that I didn't even necessarily talk to that much slash ever reached out, wanted to know what I was up to, cared, 
and then said, how can I help you? Mm. And I said, listen, I, I will absolutely take you up. Like I will, I, ha I have an answer to that. Just not yet. Mm. Thank you so much. Like I can't wait to take you up on that offer. And so it's like, that's the community. It's what made me feel safe mm. to, for the first time in my career, not have a plan and explore and play and be lazy sometimes and, you know, and, and not worry because I have, I feel the, the, like sort of the safety, there's like a net around me. And when I, on those times when I do need help, the number of people I've helped is so large and the people who I have relationships with where we love, you know, it's there and I will, you know, I'm either directly connected to or one connection away and tons of people will be happy to make it. And I am the happiest in my career and my life that I ever have been and all because of what the community has, has given me and allowed me in this sort of next phase. So I'm guessing that community you built up has been built through like those strong relationships. I think people often make a mistake when I was young in my career. I was like, oh, you just got a network. And that word itself is such a, it just leaves a bad taste in my mouth. <laughs> like networking, like business cards, but it really is about that connection and, you know, this relationship and helping each other out that really has make a big difference even in my, my career. Yeah. I mean, don't say content is a perfect example. We didn't like our launch, like we didn't market it. We're like, listen, we both know a ton of people and we know that this is going to appeal to them because we've been in, you know, we've done this forever and we've been in this community forever. So like we sent an email to like our friends, like 100 and 200 people or whatever, and or community, you know, friends in our community. And then the launch was a paperless post. We were wow. talking about how to launch the podcast and we were like, I was like, wouldn't it be funny if we just like sent an invitation to our podcast, like it's a baby shower or like a wedding. That's and it just so idea. happened, this wasn't on purpose, but based right. on when production was ready, we ended up launching on Valentine's Day. Oh. And so Margaret's like, let's send a Valentine. Oh, that's so good. Yeah. Which when I tell you that Neil O'Grady from Demand Curve mm, messaged yeah. me on LinkedIn was like, this is an interesting approach because like, yeah, you're basically said it's like full of hearts and everything. We're like sending it to these people. We're like, hey, um, we, I think I said this earlier, like the podcast, um, which was intended to be just like keep us top of mind mm. channel as we embark on these journeys. It became, you know, we got um, inbound sponsorships. We got way more mm. downloads in the first season. And then I think we grew by like, 30% this season. I don't actually cool. remember and the numbers on all it, but it was something like that. And we were like, whoa, hey, you like, and people love it. The letters I get. This woman wrote me the other day, this like long note about how much she felt seen and how this exact situation yeah. that I talked about had happened to her and how like grateful, she, you know, and she's like, I love, you know, I love listening to the show. It's like, whoa, holy shit. Like talk about reward for doing something. Mm -hmm. It's so fun because That's you, cool. you know, you get to see. So, um, you know, it is, it's both a monetary, like community is, I have quite literally made money off of my community, <laughs> um, and, and, uh, you know, built something, a creative thing through that. And you're right. I didn't do it by networking. Mm -hmm. I did it by going to networking events and walking up to Lena Prickett and saying, talking to her. And then at the end of it saying, we are going to be friends. <laughs> Give me your phone number. I love that. And we're very, like, we're close. And today, same with Gwen Betts. I was like, hi, we're friends now. So <laughs> when do you want to That's so good. I just love that. Yeah. Just like, hey, we're going to be friends. I think they're just manifesting potential there in terms of that relationship. It's super cool. Yeah. And they're like, heck yeah, let's do this. Oh, one final question before we wrap up. If you can... Travel back. Well, if you can send a message, it could be paperless posts for all we know to travel back in time to your younger okay. self, maybe to a Devin who's starting out in marketing, or it could be much later. What would be a piece of advice you'd give your, your younger self? It could be about marketing. It could be about life. It could be about career. 
It could be about anything really. Yeah. I'm, I, my advice is sort of an adaptation of something my mom has always said to me. Uh, and it is, my adaptation is what other people are doing is none of my business. Yeah. And that's really, uh, speaks to don't be boring. Be, like being yourself is the best shot you have of standing out from everybody else and finding something that you truly love doing. Mm. And I think early on, my experience was that I was terrified because I grew up with a, like an alternative lifestyle. I was homeschooled. I, you know, went to, like I went to college in Maui when I was 16. Like I just, I ran this company, like it was weird and it didn't look like everybody else. And especially in those early days, like it's all about conformity. Like you go from here to here to here to here. And I was really self-conscious about that. And it made me want to stifle myself in a lot of ways. Mm. But every single time I stopped and stopped stifling myself and pitched something weird, it fucking worked. And people loved it. Mm. And, you know, I'm talking people like leaders at the company. One time our board latched onto something I launched and my, the first startup I worked for, like they would talk about it in board meetings. And it was, it was called the Spring Pad Show and it was not cool, but it was. <laughs> Perfect for that community, That's funny. you know, and so cool. it's like, you know, it's, it's nice to be inspired by people, but I see yeah. a lot of inspired people just spouting the person, the other person's words instead of trying to adapt that into their own lives. And it makes them, and, and those are people that aren't, you know, you have to practice before you can preach. I, I, I understand, but um, it keeps you away from idolization. And uses the people around you for what they're good for, which is inspiration, partnership, uh, et cetera. I think like if I, I don't know what this, like what this really looks like, but for marketers specifically, like little mark baby marketing me, this was very present. Like don't try to make your founder or CEO happy. Mm -hmm. Oddly, the more you try to make them happy, the less effective you are and the more they yeah. hate you. So just just be fine with it being a little bit like tension, you know, mm -hmm. there a little tension being there because you're going to serve. I hate to say this, but like you are going to serve them better. And if they don't appreciate it, you'll have something to show for your work there when you go to somewhere else where you are appreciated. So it's like kind of better for you and mm -hmm. through them, I guess. So, uh, don't worry, just don't worry about like, don't worry about pleasing people, anyone, just like be a decent, you know, yeah. be, be a good person, be fair. Um, and don't worry about the rest because, man, we work in a real ornery business that is not known for good behavior. Mm -hmm. Like startups are where good behavior goes to die. So I'm like, just don't worry about people liking you. It's not important. Startups Focus on the work and making, so you know, using the yeah. company to build your career. And Such a good chat with Devin. I really love just connecting with her and just making this more of a conversational approach. You can find out more about Devin by following her on LinkedIn, Twitter, and even TikTok. She has a podcast, Don't Say Content. All those links are in the show notes and description. Thank you to Devin for being on the show. If you enjoyed this episode, you'd love the Marketing Power Ups newsletter. I share the actionable takeaways and break down the frameworks of world-class marketers. You can go to marketingpowerups.com to subscribe and you'll instantly unlock the three best frameworks that top marketers use to hit their KPIs consistently and wow their colleagues. I want to say thank you to you for listening and please like and follow Marketing Power Ups on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify. If you feel like extra generous, kind of leave a review on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. And leave a comment on YouTube. Goes a long way in others finding out about Marketing Power Ups. Thanks to Mary Sullivan for creating the artwork and design. And thank you to Faisal Kaigo for editing the intro video. And of course, thank you for listening. That's all for now. Have a powered update. Marketing Power Ups. Until the next episode...